Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today we're going to talk about the impact of steel. If you're an avid metal fan, I also have a video about aluminium, so you're very welcome to check that one out as well. But I wanted to talk specifically about the impact of steel today because in the realm of sustainability and general, I guess it's widely regarded as better than plastic. Many zero waste swaps like drinking bottles and lunch boxes and chopsticks, all things that I own myself, are made from stainless steel. So I think it's worth a while to dive down into the impact of how it's made, how it's used, how it's recycled and talk about that. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's do this. First of all, stainless steel is an iron containing alloy, which means it's a mixed material. To produce steel, you have to mix several other elements together. Steel is basically just iron with most of its carbon removed. To produce it, you need to combine elements that is found in the earth. Iron ore, which is one of the main components, then you need chromium, which gives the stain resistance. You need silicon, nickel, carbon, nitrogen, among other things. And depending on how these elements are put together and how their ratio is between them, the steel can have different properties and qualities. Stainless steel's main component is iron, so let's talk about that. One of the fun things that I learned while researching for this video is that iron is not naturally found anywhere in the world. Iron is an extremely reactive element, which means that it reacts to everything around it. So the way that we make iron is by turning iron ore into iron. Iron ore is retrieved through mining in primarily Australia, Brazil, Russia and China. And mining any area we have talked about mining in several of the other impact videos as well come with a huge environmental impact. When something needs to be mined you need huge spaces to do so and that always comes with consequences for biodiversity and loss of natural habitat. There is more than 800 billion tons of crude iron ore available in the earth. It accounts for 5% of the earth's crust. It's the fourth most abundant element in the crust and 98% retrieved iron ore is used to make steel. This industry is responsible for 8% of annual global emissions, which is more than plane travel or the internet. It's estimated that to produce one ton of steel, 4.2 tons of CO2 is emitted. But other than mining, where does the impact come from? When making steel, iron ore and other respective elements are heated in an electric blast furnace for 8 to 12 hours. This process accounts for a huge part of the material's impact because just like with glass, keeping a furnace really, really hot for a really long time does come with quite the impact. When steel has to reach these really high temperatures and repeatedly as well, three to four times at least, it does come with quite the impact because keeping these furnaces hot requires a lot of energy and usually that comes from fossil fuels. The reason why steel is reheated many times just up by the way is because you heat the steel and then you cool it down and then you do that several times and that releases tension in the steel and adds density. But the furnaces, 50% of the production of steel is powered by coal. 35% is powered by electricity, 5% is powered by natural gas, and 5% is powered by other gases. Furthermore, during the 21st century, the production of steel has doubled from 20 million tons a year to 40 million tons. However, up to 80% of stainless steel produced today is based on scrap metal, aka recycling, which we will be talking about again in a little while. Stainless steel is used in a variety of different products, the most frequent one of which is as a core material in construction, which accounts for almost 51% of all steel use. The transportation industry is also a large consumer of steel products, and 22,000 tons of stainless steel is used by the food industry in North America every year. Most households have several stainless steel products in their house, especially in their kitchen. Luckily, stainless steel is very rarely used for disposable single-use purposes. We see that more with aluminium, which contains some of the same elements, but they're treated rather differently. Steel is usually 2.5 times denser than aluminium, and also comes with a higher production impact and a higher cost, which I assume is why it's not used for disposable purposes because it's kind of expensive. Stainless steel is also non-toxic in comparison to types of plastic which leak toxins and chemical fillers into food and skin, for instance when plastic is exposed to heat. However, steel does not, unless it's treated with coatings like BPA, which is the case with aluminium more often than steel. 
Steel is actually quite easy to recycle and just like with aluminium and glass, it does not decrease in quality over time, so you can use it over and over again. This is not the case with, for instance, plastic or paper, which can only be used a certain amount of times before you need to add virgin material to uphold a certain quality level. You do not have to add virgin steel to recycling steel in order to do so, which is pretty neat. Steel also has one of the highest global recycling rates in the world, which was measured at 86% in 2014. Furthermore, to break the recycling of steel into smaller sections, it's estimated that 95% of steel used in the automobile industry is recycled, 88% in appliances and 70% in steel packaging. The good thing about stainless steel is that it has a smaller production impact when it's made from scraps rather than when it's made from scratch. I don't know why I decided to say this, because it's an absolute tongue twister. <laughs> you tried. To make one ton of steel, 2.4 tons of CO2 is emitted. This is drastically lowered during the recycling process. If new steel products are made with 50% recycled steel, the CO2 emissions go below 2 tons per 1 ton of steel. One ton of steel also saves 642 kilowatt hours of electricity, 76 gallons of oil, four yards of landfill space and 2,500 pounds of iron ore. Recycling steel requires 25% less energy, uses 75% less water and emits 75% less air pollution than virgin steel. However, landfills are not completely free from steel. The APA in the US reported in 2018 that they found 10.5 million tons of steel in landfill, all perfectly recyclable. So is steel better than plastic? Steel, as well as other types of metal, has higher initial production impacts than plastic because it's heavier and it requires more resources to produce. However, that is not necessarily the entire story. Plastic comes with more long-lasting negative impacts on the planet. For instance, recycling inefficiency. On a global average, 9% of all plastic is recycled. There's also the issue of ocean pollution and microplastic recently found in human placentas. Plastic production and pollution also has a generally higher impact and negative impact on nature and natural habitats than both steel mining and steel production. Steel is not a biodegradable material because it's a non-reactive material, but it also does not release fumes, toxins and chemicals when left in sunlight or in heat or in water, like plastic will. So it's just there, being neutral, doing nothing. <laughs> Furthermore, while steel production also utilizes fossil fuels for power, plastic is much more dependent on that industry as crude oil is the primary component in plastic making and the oil industry is by far the most polluting on the planet. In other good news, electricity as a power source to produce steel seems to be increasing. Another plus, plastic can only be recycled two to three times before it literally cannot be recycled anymore and you have to add so much new plastic to it that you cannot call it a recycled product. But steel is infinitely recyclable. Lastly, stainless steel's initial emissions are higher than plastics, but plastic continues to pollute and emit CO2 and methane during its entire life cycle, even when it ends in landfill especially when it ends in landfill. <laughs> However, replacing a single-use plastic product with a single-use stainless steel product would absolutely not be more sustainable. A good example to show what I mean is by looking at this study of straws and their energy consumption and CO2 emissions. A stainless steel straw requires significantly more resources to produce than a plastic straw. It releases more CO2, so the stainless steel straw would only be more sustainable in terms of emissions if it's used 150 times. So it's only more sustainable if it replaces 150 plastic straws. This is not unrealistic to expect from a stainless steel product because it doesn't degrade in quality when you use it, you can use it forever, so just not lose it and keep using them if you have them. So is stainless steel sustainable? I would say stainless steel can be a really sustainable product because it's infinitely recyclable and if it's produced in a closed loop using recycling and electricity, that would be amazing. Luckily, this is a process that's already happening and it's increasing every single day, which is really cool. But I think it is really worth mentioning that stainless steel products are not inherently sustainable just because you buy them. You really need to use them to make sure that they keep being sustainable and that they're 
they earned their emissions, so to speak. I love my lunchbox and water bottle and my stainless steel chopsticks, but I've also had them for more than five years and I will continue to use them. I feel like I've reached the 150 mark on some of these products. And if not, I'm sure going to. This was it for my video. I hope that you liked it. If you have any requests for other materials we should talk about, leave them down below and go find the playlist to see the ones that I already made. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're going to have an amazing day. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.